Hey everybody, welcome back to Snooze at Home. I'm very tired. Today is a special video. I So, for a little bit of backstory, and if you haven't watched it, I don't blame you, it's three hours long. In my first big, big, big unboxing, I, where I got all the Toke Snuffs, I got all the Wilsons of Shero Snuffs, and a whole bunch of little bits and bobs. I think I got, the, uh, got all the Jackson Snuffs too, got the Hedges, got it all on deck. The reviews are coming soon, these need to be talked about and immemorialized. I forgot a couple. Uh, it wasn't for lack of trying, and it's not because I didn't have the money. Snuff actually tends to be pretty inexpensive to build up a collection. Uh, what had happened was Artisan Snuff was not selling the Bernard Snuffs and a couple of other ones, and I hadn't checked Toke. Toke and Artisan Snuff are part of uh, Sneeshin. It's uh, Roderick's idea of a uh, grand, all-encompassing, Aldi-style cheap snuff website. He does a good job, and I like the prices. I think you should order from Toke if you are ordering snuff online. But the Bernards weren't on Artisan Snuff. They were on Toke, and I wanted to give Artisan Snuff a try because I thought there would be a couple of, you know, different things in Toke. But no, it turns out that Toke has just become, uh, just become like a snuff supermarket. Check out the website if you haven't in a while. They sell more than Toke Snuff now. They sell a whole lot more than Toke Snuff. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I have a big, 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 big bag. Uh, not quite as big as the other unboxing, I think. I don't know. I sort of forgot how much I ordered. And I've already been through a little bit of it, but today we're going to do another semi-unboxing. And really, this is just for me to display what I got for you. And there will be a couple of surprises in here that I that I haven't seen quite yet because this is, it's a big big bag you can see I've already unwrapped a little bit of the the floof away to try out some stuff a Bernard F original is really good but let's just go through all of it and see what's inside here as always this tend to be the case for my videos this one's gonna be pretty long so grab a cup of coffee or a cup of tea if you haven't got one already so I'm just going to start pulling stuff out. Most of this stuff is stuff I haven't tried yet. Polar Prisa. Cool. Uh, going to be the entire Bernard range. Maybe there are a couple of little weird hyper-local ones that I don't quite, quite, quite have in this batch. But I'm hoping to have all of them. And I also have all of them the crystals. So this is going to be original and genuine. Very cool little snuff. Uh, and I mean that literally. It's, it's medicated. Uh, it's supposed to be pretty heavily medicated. You know what I... I'm curious about it. I I never ordered McChrystals because I'm not interested in uh, medicated English style snuffs. I feel like there are too many of them on the market and I feel like a lot of you who watch this channel may agree, but if you have a favorite in an English style medicated, don't let it bother you. Let's set the tone for the video and have a nice pinch of McChrystals to ruin the palate for all these other snuffs. Oh, that's actually nice. Okay. It's it's cold, right? I can feel the menthol. I can feel the uh, all the other cool stuff, but it's it's pretty light on the eucalyptus, and I can taste the tobacco behind it. Cool. And it's not blow my head off like Hedges was. Let's, I guess we'll take a look at here. Like I said, uh, I don't know if I'm going to have time to unwrap most of these snuffs, I'll just talk about them as they come along. Sicilian Burst, meant to be a lemon-style snuff. Mold Magic, I believe, is a sort of a baking spices one. I could be wrong. So you'll notice a trend with McChrystals is that they never mention the name of the flavor in the description. Old English should be a very heavily medicated snuff, very strong menthol. The reason they don't do that for McChrystals is because there is a law in the UK for, well, certain parts of the UK. I think the Isle of Man is part of the UK, but you need to you need to not sell tobacco products with the name of the flavor that they have inside them. So you're going to see a lot of very weird naming conventions here. I think McChrystals does it the best. They have the most sophisticated names out of the whole bunch. Wilsons of Sharrows are absolutely dog shit. Uh, <laughs> the, it's all acronyms and it's very hard to decode. Warm Glow should be a, should be a cinnamon snuff, I think. Or a, maybe a rum snuff? I don't know. McChrystals is a brand I haven't had 
any contact with besides that first pinch of the O and G. So, I'm really hoping to get a feel for them. Sturko! There we are! A favorite of Simply Snuff. That one's gonna be a very heavily mentholated snuff, I think. You know what? While I'm here, and I'll do this for the jip too, just for you, just to get a little bit more pleasure. Let's see what's up with the differences between all these McChrystals made medicated snuffs. These little tiny tins are really nice, by the way, too. Uh, they, they they just feel super compact and nice. It's like a little tiny uh, little tiny makeup tin. McChrystals doesn't overpack their stuff like Wilson's of Shero, a blessing and a curse. You get a little bit less snuff, but it doesn't fly out all over your desk. Let's see what's up with Sturco. Kind of expecting a, a strong menthol. Oh my, oh. <laughs> it's not that strong. There's a, it's a darker tobacco. Not super duper dark. I mean, you can see it here. It's, it's pretty light, but light in color doesn't always equate to light in taste. It's a little bit, uh, a little bit more leathery, I guess. And that medication's different. That's a lo hoo hoo. That's a lot of fucking eucalyptus. Holy smokes. Wow. Woo! Very cold. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. So there is a difference. And we'll see what happens with the jip, too. Got some more Bernards here, I can see. The Schmalzler Franzel Fresco. I have no idea what that one is. Sh should just be uh, kind of a... Bernard, I have had little pinches of these, right? I have had the, the Fichtenadel. I've had the uh, some other stuff. But I haven't had all of them. From what I can tell... They tend to be very deep, complex, uh, sometimes flavored, sometimes not, but complex, and pretty well alkalized, pretty high nicotine schmalzlers. So I'm liking them a lot so far. I have Bernard Schmalzler Weissblau. That's going to be their, their Munich-inspired snuff. Wiesen snuff. That's going to be their Oktoberfest snuff. And I also got all the Schnupfpulvers. Kult aus Bayern. I have no idea what that means. German, guys, is not that hard to learn the pronunciation for, but it is a very difficult language to learn. If you're interested in learning it just for snuff, I recommend learning the orthography and then stopping there. It's going to make you sound a lot more impressive without having to put any of the legwork in. The reason I got all the schnupfpulvers is Bernard makes quite a lot of them, and if I'm going to be thorough about documenting all of the different nasal snuffs on the market today. I do have to get the stuff that I'm not particularly interested in, and that's going to include a lot of the schnupfpulvers. I can't smell Jack Diddley. There's a little bit of like a soft peppermint in here, and that's going to be it. Let me blow my nose, actually. Do I have something I can... Well, I'll use the wrapping paper. Why not? If you couldn't get the impression before, even though I am seriously disinterested in the medicateds as a daily use snuff, I am interested in them with the fine differences in them, but they always blow my nose apart. They, they really, unless you wait quite a while, they absolutely destroy any scent recognition. If you're doing a big unboxing like this, can be a little bit bad. Ooh, I see some special stuff in there. I'm going to save that for later. Another Schnupfpulver. This is Nasavais E. That's going to be extra. And I don't know what it's what it's extra of. I do like the Bernard Taptons. They're a little bit hard to get open, but you can get them open with one hand. And I find that the hole, being a little bit bigger than Herschel's, makes it a little bit easier to get what you want. I smell peppermint and something else. Isn't that nice? I'll put you... Up here, my little schnupfpulvers. Digging around more. Postillon, this is going to be a schmaltzler with, I think, scotch whiskey, maybe? When I say Bernard is complex, I really do mean it. The descriptions online really don't do any justice to how these snuffs actually hold up in the nose. It's it's unbelievable the, the, the dimensionality that Bernard can give to their schmaltzlers and snuffs. Spicy, like a spicy raisin. Maybe a little bit of a peatiness, uh, but nothing that I would call directly whiskey. It's it's like I said, it's it's 
it's layered. And that doesn't mean I like Bernard more than I like Herschel. I think Herschel has a lot of good stuff going for it, but the Schmaltzer range here is unbelievable. I'll show you guys something extra at the end of the video as well. Double unboxing, double unboxing, why not? Even though the other one's kind of already been unboxed. And this one is already kind of torn apart too. Tiger Snuff. Gee, that's going to be Tiger Snuff Guarana. It's a little berry that looks like an eyeball that grows in the Amazon. That smells pretty good. There is an, uh, a soda. It's not an energy drink. Very popular in Brazil, very popular in Miami too, where I live because of the Latin American community, called Guarana Antarctica. And this smells pretty darn close. It's got the... How would I put this? It's got kind of a, a Red Bull smell without the ginseng. And if you've been to a... So I, I guess you could call it a uh, an Asian supermarket and you've tried out their little energy drinks, the Koreans, especially like very small shot type styles, like in 5-Hour Energy. They have one called Bacchus D. They also have a couple of ginseng flavored ones. It's just Red Bull without the ginseng. It makes it a lot softer. It takes out some of the uh, delicious dryness that Red Bull can have, but it's still pretty nice. And this is smelling a lot like that. I'm going to take a cheeky little sniff. Super fluffy on these Bernard Schnupfers, by the way. Oh man, that's awesome. That's fruity. It's like Guarana Antarctica. And we'll see if that gives me any energy. If you see my hands a little bit shaky, I took pre-workout to wake up. I don't usually do this, but it was a pretty rough night, so I took a little uh, C4 Ultimate to kind of get myself perked up for the day. And that's always a mistake, because it makes it, it, it just jitters the heck out of you. There we go. Hope you like that. I'm not going to do any editing on this video, and you're going to hear a couple sneezes, so just be aware, okay? I'll try and move away. <laughs> Woo! This is a snooze at home video. It's a little bit different. You get to hear every sneeze. Bernard Jubilam Snuff is a... It's a snuff schmaltzer hybrid. It's kind of cool. They say it has some lingonberry. I don't really smell any of it. But it is a really nice mentholated schmaltzler style. Jip! There we are! So let's see what's up with this. That'll be the last mentholated one I take a toot of, I promise. So the Crystals produces a couple of historical blends. I think they were always made by McChrystals. I think Sterco may have been made by a different manufacturer before and was purchased by McChrystals, but I could be mistaken. Whoosh! But Jip, I think, was always made by McChrystals for sure. Color looks about the same. Ooh, that's menthol. That's menthol, and I get a little bit of camphor too. Let's take a Ooh. Oh, wow, that's, that's, uh, ooh. Okay, no tobacco smell in that. At least none that I can really rip apart from the menthol. But it's not quite as mind-blowing as a Sterco. It's like a soft menthol. It's a, a menthol that, you know, takes everything away from the tobacco, but it's a soft menthol. A little eucalyptus-y, actually. Probably a lot more eucalyptus-y than the menthol. It's not really that cold, but you can smell the coldness, if you get what I mean. There is a Naze of Ice regular. You go over there, or you know what you're kind of about. And here's one I haven't opened. I think this is going to be more McChrystal stuff. The tin shape is right. Wow. Let's see. McChrystal's Glacier. That's probably going to be a peppermint. McChrystal Summer Harvest is a strawberry flavored nasal snuff. I know that for sure. Have never tried it. Kind of interested. Strawberry. Some manufacturers do really, really well. I really like Toke strawberries. Some manufacturers don't do it so well, and many don't bother at all because it's kind of a light flavor that's hard to get across in snuff. Then we have McChrystal's Sunset. No idea what that is. Uh, I know it's not a pineapple snuff because they don't have those quite, quite, quite yet. McChrystal Smokers Blend, I did have a little bit of this before. That's going to be a really nice mentholated SP. Ooh. Already got the drip from the menthol. Oh my goodness. Sharivari. 
is going to be a cherry kirsch flavored schmaltzler one that i have taken and uh don't really find that interesting <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I find it kind of cloggy. Bernard's Magic Moments. Going to be a, another strawberry flavored thingamajig, a schnupf pulver. I do have the regular Magic Moments in the same order, and I find that they're pretty different. Tiger Snuff C, I think, is Tiger Snuff Cherry, but I could be mistaken. Let's give it a little, little test sniff. I can't smell anything. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I, I can smell jip. So if you're interested in long lasting, let me go ahead and reach down. I'll just use my hat to blow some stuff out. Wow, that jip clears you out, huh? Oh my god. No real nicotine, like, snap yet. So we'll see. I have been, did have a little portion of snooze when I woke up. So maybe that's kind of doling the blow. I guess I'll get to the surprise. I got every single one of the Rosinski snuffs, and I've been through quite a lot of them. And I find them unbelievably good. I mean, really, really genuinely very good. If you don't know what Rosinski snuff is, or you're interested but haven't taken the plunge yet, Rosinski is, uh, well, it's uh, René Rosinski. He's a guy out of the, uh, I guess, uh, Palestina land? Um, Palatinate, I think it's called. I don't know what it's called in German. The Palatinate region of Germany. And he is making all-natural artisan snuffs in really, really good flavors. I forget what the Karls batter was oh wow yeah so isn't it interesting how smell can invoke memories the Carl's batter smells like uh, a mocha cappuccino like spot on it's really really good it even smells a little bit desiccated like instant mocha cappuccino can the nicotine in all of the Rosinski's by the way tends to be quite strong so if you're interested in something like that that might be good for you I do know about Rosinski, he uses all natural extracts and oils and fruit powders and vegetable powders in his snuffs as well. Oxenkopf is going to be a natural, quite a good natural. It's got kind of an NTSU thing going on. Poltergeist is going to be the... What is Poltergeist? Let's have another smell. I think it's, it's camphor with some other stuff in there too. When I had it, it... It really reminded me of like drinking a really nice spicy cola, like a cool cola. And that camphor doesn't add too much, uh, it doesn't overpower anything in the snuff. I hope that's what this is, or I'm talking out of my beehole. Yeah, that's what this is. Nice, spicy, it's got a lot of nutmeg, which really comes through, and the camphor is just there to serve a little bit of a, a, a cooling effect. Ukamaka, I forgot. Let me show you. Rosinski packages everything and they use nice, you know, it's objectively from a, a technical perspective. These are really nice and they keep the snuff very fresh and they're impermeable and they're like triple layered with plastic and foil and waxed paper. But they're a little bit uninteresting. Rosinski does sell some very nice Kashubian style snuff horns on their website. Virginia Tobacco. I smell it coming through really, really clear. Virginia tobacco. It's sort of a sweet, uh, a sweet black tea, a multi black tea smell. Dead giveaway. Cool stuff. Here we have, oh, these are kind of cool. Okay. So I've been through one of these already, but I haven't been through the other two. Rosinski does produce a line of Schmalzers. The one I had was Frankfurter, and I thought it was delicious. It smells, uh, if any of you are Italian, or Latin American, or Spanish, or Portuguese, I believe, do this as well. Maybe not the Portuguese, but all those other countries. They do something called panettone. And panettone is a very large, yeast-risen fruitcake. It's very light and fluffy. It has a succade, succade, succade. 
It has little pieces of candied citrus and raisins inside, and it smells very good. If you're if you are like a child, I guess, and you don't like fruitcake, I really encourage you to seek it out because it's delicious. And the Frankfurter smells exactly like that, like yeasty, nice cake, and then uh, a little bit of a, a zesty lime smell. It's a really good Schmalzler. I'm not gonna have any now because it'll be really messy but oh man this is awesome stuff this is the first Rosinski I ever had and I think I couldn't name a better one to start off with uh well I guess I'll open these as well Deichgraf was made to commemorate the land reclamation efforts of the Dutch in order to stop their country from sinking back into the sea a little bit of geology for you the Netherlands and the British Isles used to be connected by a large stretch of land called Doggerland. And eventually, after the, I think it's the last glacial maximum, it's uh, sort of the end of the Ice Age, but a little bit more is going on there. Doggerland sank into the sea. People lived there. People did a bunch of stuff on there, kind of like uh, the Beering Land Strait. And little bits and pieces of that land are still in the ocean. So they build a bunch of dikes, they build a bunch of dams, and they get little bits and bobs of Doggerland back. Mmm. Mmm. A little bit perfumed. Not quite as... Not nearly as heavy as the Frankfurter. It's pretty good. Kind of a light little schmaltzler with some mild spice. I think a little bit of cherry in there too, but it could be... Maybe like a more like an amaretto type of thing. Spicy, though. Spicy. Can't wait to get to that. I will be doing full pH testing on all of these, which is why I enjoy making the unboxing videos a little bit more than the preparations I do on the main reviews, because there's a lot of work and documentation that I want to get in before so I can put together a, a cohesive review where it's just not me guessing little, little pieces. That's what this is for. This is going to be my first impression set of videos, I guess. Not too many of these to go on with, though. I think I do have more or less all the snuffs available to Europeans and Americans by way of the internet. Let's see what the Oderlander is. Ooh, okay. That's pretty good. This smells... This smells like candy, but... <laughs> It's a specific type of candy. It's not a Twizzler. It's it's more sophisticated than just like sugar candy. I think I know what the smell is. I'm not gonna have any of the the Oderlander. You know what? You know what? You know what? You know what? What a tease that would be. I wouldn't want that in my unboxing video. That's three hours long, and you shouldn't stand for it either. Let's have a little bit. I'll tell you what the tin note smells like right off the bat to me. If you Remember when you were a little kid in America? And this is really not the right way to take Schmaltzler, but that's okay. I'll just take it off the enormous pinch off the tap box. If you were a little American kid and you remember getting a bunch of candy on Halloween and you remember smelling the big bag of candy and chocolate and all that stuff on the day after Halloween or on the day of Halloween, just kind of enjoying the, the loot that you got, this smells like the inside of that big bag of candy. So let's see if it smells like that in the nose. Could have a little smoke element, too. <sighs> no, but it's good. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. God, what is this smell? What is this smell? I don't know what the smell is. But it smells good. It smells spicy. It's, it's something. It's something. It's something. I have to do more research on that. I have to, to remind myself what certain things smell like. What a tragedy it would be if I got the, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the special phenomenon that's going on right now. I just have a little fear of it when I go outside. I take extra precautions to make sure I'm not going to come down with it. Because it would ruin the channel if I couldn't smell or taste anything. That would be a shame. Schmatz le Franzo. This is going to be Bernard's plain... Not plain, not really. No schmaltzer is plain. 
I'll tell you what, that Odolander has a really strong scent. Coats your whole nose. It's got some good burn, too. There is some nicotine in the Rosinski Schmaltzers, for sure. So I'll just describe what I know. This is going to be... I believe it's called Echt Ad Bayerische Schmaltzler. This is going to be their more sort of fermented... I think this one's smoky, but I'm not sure. Maybe I can smell a little bit of smoke from... It's difficult because there is some smoke inside the, the Oderlander that I, I never smelled until I was looking for. It's cool. Let me blow my nose. Oh my god. I'm going to hear a lot of that today. Getting a lot of nicotine here, friends. Thank goodness. What a way to wake up. Okay. So that smell's mostly gone. With that little blowout. Let's see what's going on with this. Kind of fruity. Like a raisins. I can't... It's still like a little... My nose is still a little bit overpowered, but I can smell a little bit more of it now. The original is probably going to smell pretty nuanced, so I might not be able to get anything. Besides, <sighs> nice rich tobacco, which I don't like to say, so let me be specific. Like if you burnt a little bit of date syrup is what's coming through there, and maybe a little bit of like a uh, carrot sinus type of smell. Carrot stewed in sugar for a long time until they caramelize, kind of coming through in the schmaltzer fensel, but with the, with the schmaltzers you never know. The tin note is not the same as the taste. Bernard's Magic Moment's gonna be there. Strawberry cheesecake smelling one, and I thought this about the other one. A little bit less about this, but I think that the Bernard's Magic Moment's Schnuffpulver smells like uh, cheapo strawberry cheesecake whey protein powder. That one's got a little bit more going on for it, I think, because of the tobacco, but we can always be wrong. Maybe it will smell like cheap whey protein in the box. Winterprise, or Winterprise. Forgot the Bavarians don't pronounce the E at the end of the words. Is not a menthol. This is going to be a, like a baking spices sort of thing. Christmas spices. I can smell some nutmeg in there. Pretty cool. And is this the last Bernard's? Colonna is... I had this described to me as sour and the only snuff that somebody had to throw away. I don't think that's the case. I actually like Kavona quite a lot. I think it's, it's a little bit boring. It's a little bit plain. It's just a very, like an underwhelming sort of, uh, an underwhelming black repay-ish. It's not a black repay by any stretch. It's just a regular nasal snuff. It's an older recipe. It just has that kind of like black repay smell going on. A darker, coarser natural, you could say. A little bit of smoky stuff in there too. Ooh, got a lot more. Rosinski also has a massive range of snuffs. I mean, it, it's approaching something like Wilson's of Shero. Alta Fritz, I have no idea what that smells like. It's one of their brown snuffs. Gold Dapper is, I think, a pine cone scented snuff. I'm curious about this one. Let's take a look. Ooh, it smells like kibble. It smells like dog kibble. It smells like the pet store. It smells... There's a little bit of fruit coming through in the background now that I... A third smell, but... <sighs> yeah, it smells like uh, you're at Petco or Pet Supermarket and you're standing next to the, the, the dog treat shaped like cookies. That sort of tastes good, but you're not supposed to eat. These sorts of snuffs tend to be the most interesting to me because they never, never reflect what they actually smell like in the in the satchel or tin or whatever. They, they have a lot more going on for them. It's just subtle. You can't smell it from the bag. Tobacco is going to be a tobacco-scented snuff. Rota Kashube is supposed to be a recipe based on what a poor Kashubian farmer would have. And this one is awesome. Extremely strong smell of dill, which I love, love, love to smell or taste in tobacco products. 
I think it gives it herbal freshness that is distinctive without being menthol or camphor or eucalyptus. And there's a little bit more going on there as well. Supposed to have some beet juice inside, people say, but I don't really smell any beets inside. Beets can kind of smell a little bit metallic, a little bit uh, like a, uh, it's a menstrual pad, I guess. But sweet, more vegetal, more polite. Sansuchi, supposed to be a orange or a lemon, I forget. Now we're getting onto the mysteries, the stuff I haven't opened yet. Gonna be another Rosinski, it's just how the bag is shaped. Berliner Luft, or Air of Berlin. Let's have a sniffy of the bag. I'm not afraid of opening these, by the way. This is like a, a really strong double seal. Ooh! It's like chocolate orange. That's really good. With a strong natural orange, too. That's tasty. Put you right there. Brussel, I guess you could pronounce it. Something from Brussels. Come on. Get open. Oh! <laughs> That's menthol. That smells like... It's definitely spearmint. It's got a little bit more going on. It's a dark tobacco. It's going to be one of their black snops. It's sort of a heavily alkalized, aged, but not schmaltzer style snuff, I guess. It smells like... Um, bu -bu -bu -bum. That smells like a, a spearmint flavored snooze a little bit. Like uh, Thunder. Thunder Loose. When they used to have it. I miss you very much, Thunder Loose, every day. I crave you. That snooze had the perfect grind. Nice and coarse and like chunky and little bits would fly around your mouth and you would gnaw on them while the snooze was in your lip. Be a great snooze for a dipper. Stargarter. It smells a little like food. I don't know what to make of it. Oh, wow. Oh, okay, that smells like tea. That smells like black tea. It smells kind of tannic, too. It could be interesting in the nose. I always thought that was a star anise-flavored snuff, but I know that's kind of uh, magical thinking, that the name must have something to do with an, an herb in English. Cloister Mischung is one that I really enjoy from Bernard. Cloister Mischung is going to be, uh, it means cloister mixture. It has a monk, it's meant to evoke kind of a, an older, simpler time. And maybe a, a schmaltzer that they would use inside a, an abbey. What I get from it, it's super cool. So it's got a little a little touch of menthol way in the background. It's got a smoky element. It's got, a, it's got an alcoholic element somewhere in there as well. It's got a sweet element. It's just a... It, it really does feel like a bunch of stuff that's been mixed together. Uh, and you do get little flecks of it every now and then, little pulses of different flavors from close to Mischung. It's good stuff. Zwiefache. Zwiefache. Hachachache. I'm losing my German. Ooh, it smells fruity. That smells good. So it's, it's got a little bit of like a... There is a, a fermented, it's, a, it's more miso, it's like sweet miso, I guess, than something like soy sauce, like you would get from a Copenhagen long cut or something like that, and it's not quite as barnyard. It smells clean, so some snuffs, when they're well fermented, can have a barnyard smell or an ammonia smell. It's a, it's a clean, but deeply fermented smell that's pretty common to all of the Bernards and this one has it and there's something light and fruity in front of it that might be that might be cool I might like that a lot approaching the end of the bag that's okay I think I'll save that one for last because I do want to do want to have a little pinch of that Ooh, a little dild of the crystals let's check it out It's going to be fine keg that's going to be their hops 
scented one. Don't know why that took so long. Aztec is going to be their chocolate-flavored nasal snuff. Sunblast. I'm curious about the Sunblast. Sunblast is supposed to be a an apricot-scented snuff. And Sunblast actually came out pretty recently. Um, you would expect an apricot snuff to be, since it is such a common flavor in nasal snuff, to be just all across the board. Super common, but McChrystal's had theirs come out and doing a little digging only a couple of years ago. So, it could be cool. Maybe they've done something a little bit different to correct some of the, the musk problems that I have with the other apricot snuffs. McChrystal's SP. Getting to the bottom, these are kind of hard to undo at the end. By the way, this sort of uh, paper on paper, inside paper packaging is common to toke and artisan snuff. I think it's a really nice way of packaging snuff. It keeps everything very distinct. Weed Ram is going to be a scotch flavored one, and Vintage Velvet is going to be... What is the name of it? <laughs> Some snuff in the back of the throat. It's going to be a violet scented snuff. I do like floral flavors, so it could be good. Some more Bernards. And Bernards I haven't opened. Let's see what's up. Okay, so we have one schnupp pulver. This is going to be ice crystal, which is ice crystal in English. Probably a very heavily mentholated one. The Amostrinia. This is one that gets talked about very favorably by almost everybody. Let me smell. A little bit smoky, like smoked meat, but not like a lot of Kia tobacco. It has the, the scent of the fermentation that Bernard's always has. Could be cool. Could be super nice, and it probably is, but I won't smell today. Schmatz le Franz of Gold. Just a plain schmaltzer. That one's probably pretty tasty. Benaj Steife Prisa. Smell this one. This is going to be their mentholated one. And it's pretty pepperminty. Kind of spicy. Holy smokes, the Bernard range is huge. Look at that. That's just the snuff alone. It's the schnappulver behind it is pretty sizable too. And Regenberger Prise. Sweet, like raisiny and some spice, but that could be the fermentation and all the snuffs I've smelled kind of smushing together in my mind, making it hard to describe what these really are. Ooh, a little straggler here. Klippenriet is good. I've had it before. It's one of their green snuffs. Wait, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm missing a couple of snuffs. That's okay. I'm missing uh, a lot of the Rosinski green snuffs, like Nordwind and stuff like that. That's smelly. This is a wintergreen scented nasal snuff made with green tobacco. I think it's worth showing you, actually, what that might look like. Is it coming through in the bag? No. Let's get it out on the back. Really nice olive green, kind of khaki green color. And this is a really good smelling nasal snuff as well. Strong nicotine. You don't get a lot of the chlorophyll like you would expect from a snuff made of green tobacco to have. The wintergreen flavor that is there is very strong, but it's a natural, unsweet wintergreen flavor. Not medicinal. Uh, it, the closest thing I can describe it to is going to be like skull, like ordinary skull, like skull from back in the day. Kind of like... Uh, it's wintergreen approaching olives, if that makes any sense to you. And here we are. It's the one that I was most excited about. This, I think, is pronounced gek a gek a gek a whatever. Gek a gek a gek a gek a gek a gek a gek that's Virginia. This is described as a really, really, really good natural Virginia-heavy nasal snuff that comes packaged in a 
cool, like a box, a bag in a box. The style on this is really distinctive. The back is absolutely beautiful with all this sort of, uh, this hallmarking and this vintage style. A lot of nasal snuff used to come packaged like this. I don't mean like back in the Renaissance or some shit, I mean back in the 50s, but it used to come packaged like this. A lot of Eastern European nasal snuffs used to come packaged with this bag in a box thing going on. First smell of this, have never smelled it before, very excited about this, wanted to save it for the video. And it smells good. I didn't expect it to blow me away. This is, after all, just a natural nasal snuff that's been pretty heavily fermented. Not a schmaltzer. And I expect from what people tell me about that this pinch is going to be smoky and powerful. So let's see. Ah. Ooh, smoky. Very smoky. Oh my god. <laughs> Not that strong. Pretty nice clear campfire smell. Tasty. There's not a lot going on here. This is a very simple nasal snuff, which I expected. A lot of people like to take this snuff as their their day to day nasal snuff because it is so basic. Very good little smoky smell. Oh boy, can I get this back in there? Since it is a powder, let me shimmy it in. Boy, you'd think a better YouTuber would edit this out, wouldn't he? I'm just going to smush it in there. Come on. Oh, don't tell me it's going to be all fucked up. Oh, boy. Okay, it is. That's okay. Oh, there we go. That's kind of... I mean, no, not really, but... <laughs> it's in the box. It's in the box. It's in the box. It's okay. I'm going to put you back. Right here. Alright, and I did promise a double unboxing, so take a good look at the entire range. All these reviews will be up, uh, like the next year or so. Uh, I'm gonna take it pretty piece by piece. I do try and get the reviews out at a pretty good clip, because although spacing them out would mean that I get more views, that's not really what I'm after here. The views will come. This is more of a documentation mission because I feel like nasal snuff doesn't get as much love. It doesn't get talked about quite as often on popular channels as something like snuff or dip. And it deserves to be. It's a good product, and we have to save it from the, the clutches of time. We have to keep all this stuff from fading into the ether of forgetfulness and memory. Let me take a look at my partial stuff, which is in my special box, where I keep all my nasal snuff. It's a IKEA Foot Locker. It's really nice, and it didn't cost too much. So these are going to be Snuffs and Schmaltzers by Perschel that I bought from Mr. Snuff. And as much as I love ordering from Mr. Snuff, they are the only people that do have access to these kinds of Snuffs in, in the United States and in England and stuff like that. So it's, uh, it's either pay for this or don't get it at all. These are all about twice as expensive as they really should be. So, if you are ordering, maybe be patient and wait for Toke to get a hold of these more exotic snuffs. Schmaltzer D. So the Perschel Schmaltzers have a really good smell to them. It's a little bit less sophisticated and fermented than, uh, than the Bernards. Or maybe I shouldn't say less sophisticated. That's a little bit condescending. I should say different, more direct and clear. Uh, they all have sort of a sweeter, more fruity smell. That's going to be like uh, date syrup and raisins and fruitcake and leaning more towards the sweet side. Whereas Bernard, even though they do have that kind of thing going on, they're going to be a little bit more smoky and, and uh, rich and dark. Stuff like that. Schmaltzer D is going to be one of their basic Schmaltzer offerings. And all these are available in sachets. So this is going to be uh, like the sachet partials. I guess we could separate these into. Whereas the tapped in Perschels, the more popular Perschels like Red Bull, Strong, or uh, Leche Prisa are going to come in tapped ins. 
These are fairly large, as you can see. Uh, they do have smaller satchels, sachets, for some of the snuffs, but the Schmelzlers are pretty large. There is no good way to open these without destroying the packaging. But I figure the packaging is meant to be thrown away on these. And what we really care about is deep inside that hole. So let's give it a smell. Very fruity, exceedingly fruity. The D is something that I wanted to save as a description for the SF, the, the Schmalzer Sudfrucht, which just means tropical fruit in German. Where there's a strong smell of artificial banana flavoring to them. This one and Sudfrucht are the only ones that I've noticed this in, by the way. So if you're afraid of a little artificiality, then uh, maybe stay away from these. If you are unclear on what that might smell like as a, as a clear and distinct individual smell, it smells a little bit, it smells very tropical, it smells very fruity, it smells a little bit acidic, a little bit like, um, a, little bit like a lemon may smell in a dream, and then it has a, a really strong banana, idea of banana, but it's strong, it's there. If you've had banana-flavored runts, you know what I'm talking about. It's almost like a certain chewing gums. It's closer to a fruit that I like very much, but I know it's rare. It's called a mango steam, and it's got a really brilliant taste of this exact smell. The Sudfrucht is going to be that same smell, but stronger, with almost no underlying schmaltzer taste. It is there, but almost no underlying taste of tobacco. Super rich, super heavy, super delicious, very different than the Bernards. Here's one that's kind of interesting, the Perlesreuter Schmalzler. Uh, they do package schmalzers like this in these 100 gram little tiny bags. These are a lot smaller than I thought they were going to be, by the way. This is like two decks of cards stacked on top of each other. A lot smaller than the sachet in terms of size, but a lot thicker. There's a lot of snuff in here. This is going to be another... Really, really nice schmaltzer. I'm not going to open it up now. I'll save that as a surprise for later. This is just really an idea of, like, what's going on in first impressions. And I've had my first impression of this already. So you're going to have to wait. Because it's not so easy to get open. But that's going to be a really nice maple syrupy smelling schmaltzer with a, a touch of smoke. That one's pretty complex coming from Perschel. I have all the JBRs as well. These are stupid expensive. This is like... A $7 per 10 gram tin of snuff. Unbelievable. Uh, how could anyone pay for this? I did. But that's, that's because you shouldn't. And you should live vicariously through my videos if you want to experience these expensive snuffs until they become available through different avenues. But this one is a really nice... Uh, sort of... sort of cleaning product, but nice. Sweet, nice, light, lemon-scented schmaltzer hybrid and that's going to be the case for most of these these are all very lightly oiled or not oiled i think there is one in here that is an oil but for the most part all these sachet snuffs if you were interested do come kind of oiled caribic prisa gonna be caribbean pinch let me smell that one i have forgotten somebody on youtube a good friend of the channel said that some of these personal snuffs are actually identical and just branded differently I guess for different markets or because they've simplified their production range but this is what this one looks like and this one is going to be a smaller personal sachet I've always been fascinated with packaging like this because it's clearly meant to be disposed of and put into a uh, they call them uh, snoop flash I guess snuff bottle would be the closest thing but they're kind of, uh, they make them out of plastic, or they did for a time, I think they've stopped producing them. You're meant to refill those with these. Yeah, just a mentholated, slight pineapple smell from the Caribe Prisa. Maybe also meant to trick the mind into thinking that these are different flavors when they're actually just chemicals that we smell and think of as different. The Pochel Nix Snuff should be a ordinary spearmint. Some people have said that this is the same as, well, one, two people have said that this is the same as Ozona S. 
I have a pretty good idea of that snuff in my mind, since it is my favorite of the Ozona series. Or maybe it was Ozona English type, I can't remember. No, they actually do have a, a sachet spearmint, so this is going to be, if it's going to be close to anything, it's going to be Ozona English type. I'll save that for later. All of these sachets are beautiful, by the way. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful examples of an older, simpler style of packaging. Obviously a heritage product. I don't know the status or popularity of these in their native southern Germany. I can't expect them to be all that popular. But for the sake of my hobby and passion, I hope that they are. So this one is probably another beautiful example of packaging, by the way, that's going to be partial S-type snuff. And as you recall, Ozona is also called S-type. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> What's smelly? Yeah, it's pretty close. I, like, I get that they're spearmint-flavored snuffs from the same company that I'm comparing, but... If, if anything, the only difference is... This is tricking my brain when I smell these now that I found out that some might be the same, because I don't know whether or not... I'm smelling differences in freshness and attributing that to differences in manufacture or if they really do have subtle little tiny differences to them. I'm going to go with I'm going to go with Occam's razor and say that they are the same and I'm smelling different freshnesses. JBR Blue is a berry scented snuff and a good one. A very heady smell of like a like a fake grape, but like a fake white grape. It could also be a blueberry flavoring, but blueberry flavored stuff tends to have sort of a, a darker scent than this. So maybe they've done something to come closer. Maybe it's just a, a, a sinister, ambiguous berry smell that we're supposed to imagine. But it's it's a good fruity snuff. Bayan Preza is awesome. I really like Bayan Preza. I've been snuffing this one out of this entire box most, and this has had this has been my like go-to snuff for the past couple of days. It is a uh, Perschel's traditional Schmalzer. I believe it's uh, maybe it's the Perschweite, maybe it's one that I haven't shown you yet. Maybe it's the Schmalzer. Ah, but I could be mistaken. It's one of the really basic Schmalzers, and then they mix it with a little bit of a mentholated English-style snuff. And the mix of the two is unbelievably good. You get a little bit of the menthol, you get a lot of nicotine from the mix of the alkalis with all the other tobacco that's present in those English styles, but not inside the Schmaltzler. And the Brazil tobacco, the fermented Brazil in this, is awesome. And then to top that off, it's it's oiled more than all of their other tapped-in snuffs are. One of the best snuffs I've ever had out of Germany, being honest. Thank you, Perschel. It's good stuff. FC Bayern Schnuff is, some people have said, identical to Karibik Prise, but I could be mistaken. It does have kind of a faint fruity thing going on. This is advertised as a faint fruity menthol snuff. Another JBR. This is going to be wintergreen. Not as nice as a wintergreen as the Rosinski, but I didn't expect it to be in the first place. Let's see, digging around in my bag. Gawith Snuff Silver, kind of an uninteresting, sort of boring, actually, lightly fakey cola, smelly, tapped in Gawith Herschel Snuff. Alpina is nice. Alpina is good. I have never had Alpina before I got this box. Alpina is unbelievably expensive from Mr. Snuff. I think right now it's riding pretty close to seven bucks for 10 grams, which you should never pay. But it's it's a good berry, like a lingonberry flavored mentholated snuff. It's good. And the tap tin is, is really, really nice. A little bit weaker and a little bit less airtight than uh, something like this from Perschel. But the style, I like these a little bit more than the tap tins. I do like, of course, the Glechapriza, Bayan Pliza style tap boxes a little bit more because I think they're just nicer. JBR Red. I've forgotten what you are. Let's have a smell. Cherry. A nicer cherry than the Ozona cherry. 
actually a stronger, clearer, more direct cherry smell. It doesn't hang out in the in-between of faintness like Amaretto and NyQuil. This is straight NyQuil, but it's a good, clear cherry. What else do we have here? Schmotzler A, a wonderful Schmotzler that leans very strong towards the sweet side without any of the artificial fruit flavoring that these have. A wonderful snuff. Paid way too much for it. Here's an interesting one, Gletschprise Gold. Some, there's not a good description of this stuff online. I'll tell you what I remember it tasting like. We'll wait for the full review to get a fuller idea of what this stuff is. But, uh, so I'll tell you what it's been described as first. Uh, this is from a review I saw on MrSnuff.com. Somebody described this as uh, Gletschprise with not as much menthol flavoring. That, I think, is completely wrong. They got a weird box, or they got a weird batch, or they changed the formula, but that is that's not what the snuff is at all. This is Leche Prisa, but with two major differences. One is that they use spearmint instead of whatever other cooling stuff is usually in Leche Prisa. I think it's a, it's a mix of menthol and eucalyptus and camphor. There is spearmint inside this, and quite a lot of it, and it's a good spearmint. It's a brisk spearmint. And the second thing is they use lighter tobacco, probably Virginia tobacco, and it's got the sweetness and the, the tea characteristic too. And these two differences in what is already one of my favorite snuffs, I mean I, I like spearmint a lot and I like Virginia tobacco, the sweetness of it a lot, it makes this a new favorite for me for sure. It's a little bit too brisk for daily use, I think the Bayern Prisa is better for that, but I like this one nonetheless, I think it's good stuff. Gluck auf Prise is awesome as well. You may get the idea from my reviews of Ozona that I don't like Perschel very much. I love Perschel snuffs, but I feel like there are certain ones that are outstanding and certain ones that are meant for uh, meant for people to like take and then kind of enjoy because it's a fruity flavor and then throw away. I feel like if you dive deep into Perschel, they have some really, really sophisticated and good flavors. Gluck auf, if I remember correctly, is going to be a nice spicy. Ah, there's something cooling in there, there is something fruity in there, and there's something spicy in there, but not like a spicy spice. Not capsaicin, of course, and not really like a baking spice either. I think what I'm smelling in here is reminiscent of bay leaf, like a old bay seasoning. If you're in the United States, you know that pretty well. If you're in Europe, you just know what a bay leaf is. It's got that kind of smell, and then that works really well with the fruit, and it gives it kind of like a, a very masculine smell, and then it's cooling as well. Again, a little bit too brisk for daily use, but that's an outstanding blend of snuff. And I already like the Herschel texture quite a bit, so it's good. McCraig Royal. I forget what this one is exactly. Smells like a, just a Perschel's idea of an English style snuff. It's not too interesting. Maybe my nose is so clogged that I can't get a, can't get a clear idea of what this stuff is supposed to be. Here is a really interesting one. So, there was some, there was some dispute online about whether or not the Red Bull in the sachet, which is Red Bull A type or aromatic type, is the same as Red Bull from the tap tin. And I can confirm 100% that they are two completely different snuffs. Number one is that Red Bull in the tap tin is way drier and way finer than the stuff in here. And they're using different tobaccos, or they're using different alkalizers, or maybe, and more likely, they're using both different alkalizers and different tobaccos. I can see the little chunks of salts inside the Red Bull strong in the tap tin, especially when it gets dry. With this stuff, it's very uniform. It's very... Uh, just a very even fluffy brown and then the smell on this stuff is completely different so Red Bull a type aromatic it really does mean it I remember this being a really just a delightful fruity smelling snuff I really don't like Red Bull strong which is gonna be a plain strong medicated snuff but this one is it's got menthol but I can smell the underlying tobacco, and it's a chocolatey tobacco, too, and then there's a fruitiness. There's a fruitiness that comes out. And the closest thing I can describe the fruitiness as is, is like, a, like a pear, which the Red Bull Strong and the Tapton absolutely does not have. So 
I can confirm that these are very different. And this doesn't make me sneeze at all. It's a lot, it's a lot less strong in nicotine than the Red Bull Strong. Do I have any more to go? Am I in danger of compromising my smell? I guess I'll take it anyways. What I have in there, I find too strong in the nicotine to take plain. So a lot darker, and I'll bring this to the camera, than the ordinary Red Bull snuff. Uh, still not a dark or a black snuff by any stretch, but a lot darker, a lot moisture. It's good. There's like a fruitiness and there's a, a spiciness. All that stuff is missing from the original Red Bull. It doesn't make me sneeze. You can see the nicotine hit is a lot less harsh than it can be in the partial Red Bull Strong. Awesome stuff. Just wish it wasn't like fucking one paycheck to buy this. And then we have close to Andex snuff. The story is, oh, there's like a, God, what, what is it? There's like a, there's a different flavor coming out of that that isn't like anything that I just described. It's really good. I think it's coming from the tobacco. It's awesome. Awesome stuff. Close to Endex is a sort of like a, a state fair kind of thing, like a sort of a touristy attraction. Kloster, as we know, means cloister or abbey. And this is just a historically important cloister where they brew a bunch of beer and they have a bunch of different beers for you to sample and it's very fun for Oktoberfest to go there, enjoy the beer, they have a cafe, they have a restaurant. Closest thing, uh, in America we don't really have these so much, but abroad, I guess, uh, you know, like a state fair, I guess would be the closest thing. And they make a snuff, or Perschel makes a snuff for them that is branded with their logo that I guess they serve or sell at the cloister itself. And this is supposed to be a hopped scented snuff, but I can't get it. There's like a, a herbalness, but it's not resinous like I would expect a hops thing to be, or that I really want it to be, because I'm a fan of the smell of hops. It's uh, just, it's a mentholated snuff with something else going on. Not as dynamic as any of these, just a little bit different. And the, the menthol, like the medication on this is unbelievably strong. Like it's, it's big, 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 big. Don't really like it for that reason. It's just a little bit too uh, too tart for me, too strong, too too punchy. Anyways, that's the unboxing. That's I now own nearly every single nasal snuff produced and sold to Americans online. There are a couple of stragglers. There's a couple of new things coming out as well that I haven't tried yet. But uh, yeah, that's really it. So I have my work cut out for me. If you enjoyed this really long video, please like and subscribe. If you like to look at this kind of stuff or you know people that do, share it with them and maybe they'll subscribe as well. Thank you again. Big, 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 big thanks to my patrons for making this type of stuff possible. I'll have these reviews up and ready and generations to come will be able to enjoy a description of snuffs that sadly may not be around forever, but hopefully I'll be able to capture them on video so they're not forgotten. And hopefully nasal snuff continues to be on the rise, because I don't know if you've seen, but it's getting pretty popular. It's pretty cool stuff. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you.